All right, good morning everybody. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply and today's video we're going to do a couple of things. Mainly we're going to build a tote bag. It, uh, we're calling it the two-tone tote. Um, if you have our original tote pattern that's a paper pattern, it, uh, it's, it's similar, but um, we're going to go over a different way of just constructing and things like that. Um, you're going to find that this bag right here, this tote bag, is, is super easy to make. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a sewing machine or not, it does help to uh, have some skiving abilities. But uh, this was the subject of this month's mystery box right here, this tote bag. Okay, and I came on and I did a video at the beginning of the month um, and I showed that, I showed the tote bag. I said, hey, the bag itself is not the mystery in the mystery box. The surprise in the mystery box was our new templates, okay? We historically have had a hard time making templates that could be shipped if they're larger, okay? So we, uh, we always had to, like the, um, like the shaving kit, um, the dop kit template is a puzzle that you have to put together because I can't ship one giant piece of plastic and expect it to make it there. So, guess what? We have new template material for our larger templates. Flexible, okay? However, it is extremely durable. You, um, yes, you could cut it, but it's very difficult to like accidentally cut this while you're cutting out your pattern and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, the first one we're gonna have available is our two-tone tote bag, but I will go back and make several of our other bags into these nice, flexible, very, very reusable templates, okay? Super excited about this. I do not like paper patterns. I know my customers don't like paper patterns, but until now, we didn't really have a choice on the larger projects, okay? Um, so, that being said, in this mystery box was the new template, okay? It's three pieces. This is the bottom piece of the bag. This is the pocket on the side of the bag. And this is both um, of the top pieces of the bag. You cut out two of these, one of each of these. We'll get to that. Now also on this, this, this mystery box, since I already took away the mystery and told everybody what project was going to be in there, we also had the choice that if you wanted me to skive your project for you, I would do that. Okay, For somebody that's watching this that's a very, very beginner, skiving simply means you're going to thin down the edges so that when you make a bag like this that's turned or sewn inside out and turned right side out, then your seams will lay nice and flat and and if it wasn't skived then the seams would look more like that where it's for lack of a better term butt shaped okay <laughs> where there's like a, the, the leather goes in deep into the crater there and then comes back out on the other side if you skive it then that can sit out and be a flat or even a uh, um, convex i guess would be a word for it but um seam Okay, so skiving really, really helps your seams, if you're, especially if you're into bag making and clothing manufacturing, type, that type of stuff. So, in the box, we had random leathers. Some people got colored, some people got brown, some people got earth tones, some people got, who knows? But I can tell you what, we worked our butts off because we've never sold so many mystery boxes. Um, by far, we hit a record. Um, I had to skive, I don't remember the total amount that we sold, but 174 people opted for me to skive their bags. And I skived every dang one of them. The mountain of skiving shavings. If Doc wasn't walking behind me and cleaning them, cleaning them up every once in a while, the mountain of skiving shavings would have just come up to the bottom of the machine. Um, I skived so much. So, if you did not opt to have your skived, I will show you what we skived, okay? So we've got two bag sides. A pocket and we have a bottom of a bag okay now what do I sky every single thing all of it except the pocket the pocket got no skiving okay it's just a standard gonna be sewn on the side pocket all right so all that being said skived about a half an inch all the way around okay and I just skived about half the thickness of the leather off all right so that was on the bottom piece as well as both of the side pieces. Okay, you can see where the light, the light versus the dark is. That's the sky line right there. It's about a half an inch or so. Um, doesn't have to be exact as long as it's the same on all sides. Okay. Um, yeah. 
All that being said, guys, this is gonna be such a quick build. All right, we're gonna do a tiny bit of prep work over here, and then everything else is gonna be done at the sewing machine, and then we're gonna come right back over here and rivet the handles on. By the way, yes, I also included the handles in the, in the box, of course, and the handles are pre-punched to match the rivet holes on the side of the bag, and then you also got rivets in the, uh, in the kit, okay? So, super easy to build. This is a way to take a leather like this right here, okay? This is not an attractive leather. Um, this stuff has sat on our shelves for a while, and I didn't make anything out of it. Most of our customers didn't buy any of it. Um, I think some of it sold on Odd Lot. But I made, uh, we had it in three different colors, and I made some tote bags out of it. And that was when I decided that the two-tone tote needed to be our first um, flexible uh, template. And then it's also when I decided that maybe this leather was worth something because it looks ugly when it's just rolled out on the table. But when you make something out of it, it's kind of nice stuff. Um, that being said, I think most of it's gone. Um, I think we have the black left, but I think all the browns are gone. Um, anyway, all right. So we're going to start putting this thing together. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my bottom piece. Let me get my camera aimed down at the bench where it needs to be. Take my bottom piece and I'm going to lay it out flat. Then I'm going to take my top pieces and I'm going to lay them to where the bottom, okay, the top edge has the holes and the, um, and the, the rivet holes and the oblong holes in it up here. Okay, the bottom of it I want to align with the edge of my, my bottom piece, okay? And it's gonna face each other. The face side of this leather is facing the, the grain side of this leather, okay? And I'm just gonna put a couple of clips on it to hold it in place. Um, this part could be double-sided taped, but as we've spoken many times before, I do not like to double-sided tape some bag seams because when I turn it right side out later, I don't want to see the tape. Um, I don't want to accidentally um, sew it too, uh, too close to the seam or something and then have tape exposed when it's all said and done. Okay, so there we go. I got um, that one uh, pinned on or, or uh, clipped on facing that way. And I'm going to turn the other one around and do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, again, the, the handle straps are up here. They're facing me, but I'm going to clip down this, this far side that's not facing me here. Okay, and I'm just going to clip them together. And then, like I said, I'm going to do some rearranging, and everything else we're going to do today is going to be over at the sewing machine until we go over, come back to uh, rivet the handles on. Okay? There we go. So, I'm going to pause the video. When I come back, we'll be pointed at the sewing machine over there, and uh, we're going to start stitching. All right, so here we are. Um, I am at a Cobra Class 18 sewing machine. I'm using a size 20 needle and I'm using size 138 thread in the, the chestnut or brown color. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down the two seams that I, that I clipped together earlier. Okay, super easy. So we're going to press our foot here. Um, I probably should, yeah, we'll tempt fate. This machine just came back from uh, Prescott, Arizona with me, and I have not used it since it got out of the trailer, so I should test it, but since this is an inside seam, I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so we're going to go back a couple of stitches here, and then we're going to sew forward. Now, generally, when I'm sewing a seam like this, my presser foot, this edge foot, is right at the edge of my, my area, like from where it goes from skived to unskived. Okay, so that's where my presser foot is. My center foot is definitely on the skived area because that's where the needle's gonna go. It's right there on the thinner area. It does no good to skive something and then not sew it in, the, in that thin area that you skive. from the wall for this one apparently. That's fine, I'll do it in a second. Alright, so there's one. When I get to the end, I'm going to do my back stitch to lock in those stitches. Okay. Pull that out there. Let me see if I have some 
nippers in this drawer. Just put some scissors over here. I'm sorry. All right. All righty. So there we go. That seam is done. Now I've got to flip it around to the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, and literally the exact same thing. I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna uh, waste uh, video time doing it in front of you. I'm just gonna let you know that I am sewing down this side the same as I did this side, and that is all there is to it. When we come back. We'll move on to the next phase. All right, here we are. Those are both sewn down. I went ahead and grabbed a couple of things I'll need for my next part of this. So, when we open this up now, here's what we have. This is all sewn together. However, these are ugly seams, okay? They need a little bit of refinement. They need some, some pretty to them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna flip this thing over. I'm gonna take some of my double-sided tape and I'm gonna run it right along the edge, right there, okay? Um, you don't have to use double-sided tape, but it, it does assist in this, okay? But again, I'm putting it on the bottom, uh, the bottom piece of the bag, not on the side. I want to fold this seam to uh, toward the bottom. And that's how we'll make what's called a lap seam. All right. So I take it, put my tape on it, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pre-fold this before I pull the backing off my tape, and kind of press that down right there. All right. And when we put another stitch line on there, that'll create that lap seam. And one, it's extra strong. And two, it's really nice and pretty. It, uh, it really adds something to it, as opposed to just a seam and in between two colors like what we have already done here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to press that down really carefully. Okay, and I want to make sure that I'm, I, I don't want to pull so hard that I see the stitching from the first seam, but I do want it nice and tight and even against that seam so that there's not like big bubbles and wavering and stuff like that. Okay, so I got me a little roller here and I'm just going to roll it along that seam just a little bit to kind of give it some love. Okay, everything needs a little encouragement. Put my pieces back away here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew that seam down. Okay? And I'll take it, take it all the way out here to the edge. Oh, sorry. I forgot that I had to move the machine. The... There we go. All right. And I'm going to use the edge, the inside edge of my, my presser foot, my center foot, sorry, my center foot. Um, to kind of gauge how far from that edge I'm going to, to put it. And I'm going to basically about a sixteenth of an inch from the edge of my center foot to the edge of that leather there. Okay, and I'm going to go start out with my, uh, my back stitch. And this is another one that it doesn't really matter how high or low I make the stitch as long as it's consistent all the way across and on the other side that's going to have to match up to it. Okay. I'm pretty good at eyeballing a stitch line. Uh, that kind of comes with uh, experience for most, um, but some people are just good at it right out of the box. I was not. I used to have to use my edge guide a lot, and now I don't need to use it near as much. When I am using it, it's usually because I want to drink coffee or send a text while I'm sewing. <laughs> Now I do realize that for those hand stitching this project, this really does add some serious time having to stitch this line, but I promise the, the look of it is worth it. And I'll show it to you in just a second. When this one's done, I'll show you how this stitch looks compared to how the other stitch without the, the lap seam stitch uh, looks. And I hope you agree that yes, it's, it's worth taking the time to do. Still didn't move my machine from the wall. <laughs> all right, we are at the end. Do a couple of back stitches there to lock all that in place. All 
All right, so there is what my lap seam looks like up there, okay? And again, if we hadn't done the lap seam, then that's what a standard just, you know, bleh seam would look like right there, okay? There's nothing wrong with it. Two, 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 two leathers come together, it makes a nice seam, but this one's much nicer, yes. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, guys, just like before. I'm not going to bore you with the details. I'm going to put a piece of tape across the bottom there, fold that seam back, sew that seam down, and then we're going to put a pocket on it. All right, so both my lap seams are done, and uh, now I've got my little pocket piece here, okay? And it is wider than it is tall, okay? So it doesn't go on here tall-wise. It goes on here width-wise. So what I need to do is take some double-sided tape, and put it on two short ends and one long end. Okay, we're not gonna put it on all four sides because, well, it's a pocket. We can't sew it shut, right? Or at least we don't want to. We could. It's not a good way to get repeat customers or impress people. this pocket I place it about a quarter of an inch above that seam right there and the reason I don't sew the pocket on first is to make sure that I can place it's easier for me to put this pocket on here perfectly parallel with this seam than it is to worry about actually having you know a waiver in the seam or something like that after the pockets already placed and then I'm doing the seam. Um, Really, it's one of those six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. This is just how I prefer to do it after making a couple of dozen of these over the years. Um, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, um, there's holes up here for the, uh, for the handles to come through, and I just kind of eyeball and center it between those holes. Now, if you're not very good at eyeballing and centering things, you may want to go ahead and bust out the ruler and just set it across those holes. But when it's about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch above... This seam, the top of it is almost um, parallel and like in line with those bottom holes up there, okay? I know that's hard to see on the video, but that's, that's, that's the placement, that's where we're at. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, moving it right just a scooch here, and then I'm going to hold my hand on it firmly so it doesn't move, and I will take the tape off one side at a time and stick those sides down so that it doesn't move on me. Okay, so easier said than done, I guess. I love this double sided tape, but sometimes it is really annoying, especially if I chew my fingernails, which is pretty often. excuse is I chew my fingernails so that I don't scratch up leather, but we all know it's just a nasty habit. Okay, now I'm going to sew that pocket on there. Alright, super easy to do. I'm going to take the bottom of this thing and roll it up so that when I go to make my rotations at the bottom corners, it can easily slide through this old machine here. Alright. Hang on just a second. I'll adjust the camera once I get the... So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use the edge of my uh, center foot again, and I'm going to put it pretty much right at the edge of the pocket leather, okay? And I'm going to put it down to the point that, at a point where when it reverses, I want it to reverse, and I want one stitch off the top of the pocket. And that will strengthen the, uh, the entire pocket being held on well if we, um, if we take that top st stitch off the top of the pocket. Okay, and then I'm going to go back down, and I'm going to stitch that pocket on. A um, couple of little tidbits here I'll show you as we go along.
when I get down to the bottom, if I am, say, at a spot where one more stitch is going to go off the edge of the pocket um, and one few, and keeping it at that stitch is not close enough to the edge, there is a little trick I can do. Um, but hang on a second, because unfortunately I don't think I need to do that trick on... Yeah, I do. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. This is going to be... I'm going to... Let me zoom in on my needle. It'll help you see. I am all the way zoomed in, unfortunately. All right. So, I'll describe it really, really well. And hopefully you can see it. All right. So, I'm going to take... I'm using my hand wheel, and I'm taking that leather... Or that, uh, that needle, and I want to put it to where it's almost touching the leather. Okay? I've lifted with my presser foot so I can see what I'm doing here. But I am going to put my presser foot back down to execute this next step. Now, a machine like this, when you put it in reverse, it moves everything. Okay? It moves the leather, or the needle and everything, back and forth on the leather. See? So all I do is, I'm going to press down on the reverse lever until that needle is exactly where I want it, and then I'll go ahead and complete the stitch like that. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm sure that was not easy to see and it definitely wasn't easy to explain but if you go to your sewing machine and play with it and try it out you'll see and you'll be like man that is the coolest trick if you don't have a sewing machine yet save this video you'll get one one day and uh yeah then you can play with it if you're near Waco, texas come do it online did my 90 degree turn down there and now I'm all the way coming back up to the top of the pocket again and again I'm going to do one stitch past the top of the pocket and then I'm going to sorry my bobbin winders caught up over here um, and then I'm going to do my reverse stitches from there So I did one stitch off the top of the pocket. Now I'll do my reverse stitches. And the pocket is on. We are two-thirds of the way done with this bag already, and it seems like we hadn't even gotten started. This thing is so easy to make. And in the right um, market, you can get a lot of money for such a simple bag. Um, but it's all about your marketing ability. All right. Cut some more of these off. Now, one thing we haven't done yet, and that's fine. It's not like we missed it. I just normally do it kind of later. But we need to sew down the top edges of the bag. Okay, we need to fold these down and sew them. So I'm going to take some double-sided tape right now and get on that. So let me uh, make it to where you can see what I'm doing. Uh, okay, let me zoom out a little. There we go. Okay, take my double-sided tape, and this is the very top of the edge of the bag, right here. And I'm going to do this on both sides, and then I'm going to sew both sides. But I'm going to put it right at the very, very top edge, making sure not to go over the top edge. I'm just going to put me a bead of tape on there. Now, before I take the backing off that tape, I'm going to fold down that top edge just even with the sky that I created. Okay. And I'm basically just kind of pre-stretching the leather so it'll go nicely once I pull the, the backing off the tape. All right. Pull the backing off the tape. Now, I normally start in the middle here. And I'll fold over a pretty good-sized chunk in the middle. And then I like to take either the side of my finger or two or three fingers at a time and fold that over all at once because if I just take one finger and do it you'll get you'll get waffles in the top of your bag it'll it'll kind of look like little hills um, but if you do large areas at a time then you won't see that you won't have that problem okay so 
So there we go. There is one side of it taped down. Do the exact same thing on the other side real quick. And then I'm going to stitch, stitch those down. Thread stuck on my tape. Dang it. Go away. got my tape on there. Again, I'm going to kind of pre-stretch that uh, part of the leather to uh, fold that down. Make sure it's going to fold nicely. There's not some hard part of the leather that's not going to fold uh, when I need it to. Super duper simple, folks. My son is 11 and he just completed his second complete leather project. And it was a similar bag to this, but it actually had a zipper on top. And granted, I helped him, of course. But if my 11 year old son that cares about nothing in the world but video games can do this, I'm pretty sure anybody can. <laughs> All right, I'm going to adjust the camera back to the sewing machine here. Okay. Now, kind of like I did with this seam down here, um, the sorry, the lap seam, you can't see it on the camera now, um, but I did point at it. <laughs> kind of like I did with that, I'm going to take the sewing machine and I'm going to put the, uh, the edge of the center foot about a sixteenth of an inch off the top of it here, off the fold, and I'm going to start out in reverse. And then I'm going to go forward. Okay, and these edge seams are super easy because I'll just put my finger right here. And I'll let the bag slide right by my finger just like an edge guide. I've got an edge guide on this machine, but my finger works just as good, so I use it. As long as I don't move that finger, it's going to sew great. But once I go to pick my nose, i got to figure out where it was and put it right back where it belongs. that exact same thing on the other top seam then I'm gonna grab my uh, my clips again and we're gonna start sewing this uh, this bag into a bag shape we'll be back all right we've come far in a short amount of time we got that uh, that top seam fixed up and sewn okay now it's time to make a bag out of it right so what we want to do is carefully match up the top edges of the bag here I'm going to put a clip on each side of it, each side along the top, okay, that way they're out of the way of the sewing machine. I don't want to have to move these clips while I'm sewing the lines I'm about to sew. Okay, now after I do that, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to watch where the side seams are, and if I need to fudge it just a little bit to make sure that the, the sides of them where like the, the colors meet up here, I want those laying perfectly on top of each other. I don't want one of them an eighth of an inch higher than the other. So if you need to kind of fudge it around a little bit and, and, and bully it into position, then go for it. it it's okay. Um, but you do want those sides to, uh, to match up. Otherwise, when you turn the bag right side out, you'll definitely see where the brown on this side and the brown on this side don't match up. Okay? And what it is, it's just it's a difference in you know how how uh, exacting you got when you sewed down your uh, your top part and then also your lap seam. You know, um, it takes a lot of practice to constant consistently sew those the exact same every single time. So that's that's why that happens. Okay. All right. So now, got it folded in half here. Now what I'm going to sew is right down these sides, just like this. Okay, so I'm going to start, you can start at the bottom, you can start at the top, it does not matter. Okay, 
But once again, I'm going to sew in my, my edge, my presser foot, my side foot is going to be right at the edge of the skive um, so that I know that my needle and my center foot are sewing on the skived area, on the thinner area. Okay. So I'm going to start up here at the top. Let me uh, adjust my camera so you can see where we're at. There we go. Okay, so we'll get, as always, I'm going to start out, do a couple of stitches in reverse, and then I'm going to go forward. There we go. And I'm just stitching down these two sides. I'm not doing anything with the L-shaped cut out on the bottom yet, just the sides. Okay, now where it goes here, it goes from thin to a little bit thicker all at once. So you may have to give your presser foot a little bit of a... a um, with my knee, I'm lifting the presser foot just slightly to help it climb up over that, that little hump there. When I get it all the way down to the bottom, it doesn't necessarily have to run off the edge, but as close to the bottom as I can get it, I'm going to go ahead and reverse it, do a couple of stitches, and we're done with that side. And I'm going to flip it around to the exact same thing on the other side. And this is one of those stitches and seams, it doesn't matter, I can flip it this way, or I could just spin it around and go from the bottom to the top this time. Um, doesn't matter. Six in one hand, half a dozen the other, get her done. Okay, so I'm going to reverse a couple of stitches and make sure my sides line up here because they don't look like they are. There we go. Get my reverse stitches done, now I'm going to go forward. When I get to the thick part, once again, I'm going to lift with my pressure foot ever so slightly while I sew, and that will help me to ensure that I get up over the hump, and then I'm going to continue on. Okay, when I get to the top, I'm going to try to get as close to the top as I can before I reverse it. There we go. Now it is time to do what's called the box seam. Okay, and that's where we turn this flat piece into a bag. So, I'm probably going to have to move the camera over to the other side of the sewing machine because the bag is going to be in the way while I do this. But before I do all that, I will just kind of show you how we're going to create this. So now I need to go ahead and take and trim my threads here right quick. There we go. Need to go ahead and take and spread this out a little bit. And I'm going to pull at these corners right here until those seams or those uh, two skived areas match up. All right, and then generally I'll take and split this seam like this. And I'm gonna pin it down just like that. Or not pin it, but uh, clip it, okay? Now, the next line I'm gonna sew is right across this skive. And it's gonna go from where this cut corner is, directly above it, all the way across to the same area on the other side. And that's that. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clip both of these down because I have to kind of stand the bag up to sew that line. And it just makes it easier to go ahead and go from one to the other if they're both already done. Now you do want to make sure that this is nice and even. You don't want it rolled over to where um, 
you, you want the that L-shaped corner right in the corners here. Um, when you pull it tight, you want it right on the edges. If it's if it's uh, cattywampus and 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 uh, out of skew, I guess would be the good word for it. Then your bag will also be out of skew when you're when it's all said and done. I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to move it to the other side of the sewing machine so you can see the, the actual needle part of the sewing machine and uh, grab it. All right, I am going to try to sew this and keep my hands out of the way all at the same time. We shall see how that works. But basically, I'll push in this side of the bag. I'm pushing from the bottom so you can see it. But I'll push in this side of the bag here. I'm going to try to flatten that out as much as I can. Put it under my sewing machine. Okay, I'm going to start out in reverse. I'm going to go forward. Again, I'm going to try to keep my hands out of your way, but we'll see how well that works. I also have to sew. <laughs> okay, pulled my clip off there. Silence the phone there. Janie's trying to call. Alright, sew it all the way across. When I get to the other end, a couple of back stitches. And there we go. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side, so I will not waste uh, video time to do it. And uh, when I come back, we will be back at the uh, workbench. I will turn the bag right side out and we will install some handles. Alright, it is now time to turn this bag right side out. Now, totes are pretty straightforward, so I'm not very concerned at all. But when I'm making a duffel bag or something that's got lots of seam work and stuff like that, I always call this the moment of truth because this is when you find out if you missed something somewhere or your seams aren't as good as they should be or whatever. Luckily totes are pretty pretty uh, squared. All right, so I just took off my watch and stuff. I always do so that when I'm doing this, I don't, um, don't accidentally scratch up my leather and stuff like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with one corner and I'm gonna press it in. And then I'm just gonna continue pulling it and making the leather work to me while I do. Now when I get up here to the top, I don't want to stress that seam that's holding the sides of that bag together. So I go ahead and kind of hold that together while I turn it right side out in that area. And then once it's down here, now this is the stress point and that's not near as bad as right there at the, at the top of your seam. Okay? And I'm just kind of, I flipped it over, now I'm kind of doing the exact opposite thing. As I work my way back down the other side, I'll start pushing it through. And there's no real rhyme or reason to this, um, but this is, you know, again, this tote bag's not near as hard to turn right side out as a backpack that's got four layers of pockets and stuff inside of it and things like that. Okay. So, here we go. When it gets to that bottom seam, I, I push it out and everything, and I push out my corners, but... I, I don't push so hard that I'm stressing the, the seam itself. I just want to get it to where it's all, um, you know, where my corners are sharp and stuff like that. But if you push too hard, then you're going to start, you know, seeing a lot of thread in there, no matter how good your sew lines are. All right, and then I take and I just kind of fold my seams back and everything. And the other thing I'll do is there's no seam here, but I'll kind of pre-pinch these corners down so that the bag will sit more squarely when it's sitting on the table. Okay. Again, there's no seam or anything like that to follow. I just go from one corner to the other, pinching it together and giving it some shape and some structure. Okay. So there we go. We got a bag. But what we don't have is handles. So let's put our bag to the side for just a moment. I've got the two handles here. I am not going to um, burnish these handles. I use this brown strap leather for all kinds of handles and backpack straps and stuff like that. Hardly ever do I um, 
furnish any of them, um, depending on the usage. On a tote like this, this is kind of a rugged tote. I didn't do all rolled edges on like the pockets and stuff like that. So it doesn't bother me at all to leave these, these handles um, unburnished, but I am going to edge them because they'll be a lot more comfortable in the hand. Okay, and also this leather gets a really nice, it's got a nice uh, color variation between its top grain and where I just, uh, just did that edger there. Okay, so I'm just going to edge all four sides of both of these handles. And then we're going to do four quick uh, rivets per side and we're going to have them installed. I'm excited when this video is over. I've got me a brand new green mat to put under. Um, this one, they get pretty stained up with glue and stuff like that. And then the one I have now is going to be a lot bigger than this one. But this one, uh, some chemicals also react to it and kind of peel away some of the finish on it and stuff. And anyway, it's not worn out, but it's worn out for my video standards. <laughs> Little things in life excite me. A new green mat for my workbench. Actually, I don't know if it's green. Um, well, yeah, it's got a green side and a black side. Let me try the black side and see how that works. Uh, the, the edger I'm using is a Berry King grooved edger. This is a size zero. Um, and it's doing a fine job. Two more sides to go. Love to use copper rivets with this bag and I thought I had copper rivets over here um, but I don't I only have brass so I'm gonna use brass um, yeah this one just seems like it would be awesome with some copper rivets but that's how it is now how these handles go in here um, so you take it you put the handle through the oblong slot there and then you're gonna line up the holes on the inside. Now it used to be I would just rivet a, a, a bag uh, toad handle like this to the outside and there's nothing wrong with it but I think it has a much nicer cleaner appearance when you rivet it to the inside like we're gonna do today. As a matter of fact I've got a clicker die I want to send back to the die company because I started doing the whole inside thing after um, that design was made and I'd already made a couple of dozen of those bags then I figured that out and figured out I liked it more the other way. So the dye company said send it back and they'll uh, they'll add the oblong holes to it for me. All right, I'm gonna need four rivets per side. side of the rivet on the outside of the bag. So I'm going to put that rivet through there. And that rivet through there, I think. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right, I'm going to try to turn this to where you can see what I'm doing here. What I do is I just fold in the other side of the bag so I'm not trying to work inside of a, of a enclosed area there. Put my little uh, washers on them. Let me get my setter tool.
got those on. Grab my cutters and my ball peen hammer. Got them cut, now I'm just going to peen them over. Then I'll go over to the ball side of the hammer. I'll go around it to make sure that it flattens out and mushrooms down real well. And then I always take my finger and rub over it. And as long as it doesn't catch my fingerprint um, on my finger, then it won't catch, you know, stuff that I put in or pull out of the bag or the, the end user. This is not my bag. I swear it's not mine, officer. I had a comment on one of my videos the other day. A man or woman, I'm not sure who it was that commented. I didn't pay attention to the name, but they said, you know, it's really annoying when you take things and hold them up to the camera. Why can't you take the camera and zoom it in on stuff and then it's not as bothersome? I'm not really sure what's bothersome about it, but the, the reason I can't do that is because my camera's mounted on a tripod because I don't have a cameraman. If I had a cameraman, then I would have them standing over my shoulder and doing all kinds of great angles and crazy stuff like that. And it also wouldn't take me three days to edit a dadgum video doing it the way I do. So that is why, in case that person is watching. Now when I put the other end of the handle in, I do have to make sure, of course, that it doesn't twist or turn. You know, you don't want the thing to make a rotation out there. Oh, that was funny. That one bounced off from the top of my light and then landed in my little bucket of uh, clips. exact same thing on the other side of the bag folks so I don't feel the need to waste your time to make you watch it but when I come back we'll uh, we'll do our exit and uh, show off the bag all right folks there it is uh, on our website we've called the template the two-tone tote by the time this video is posted the uh, new flexible templates for this bag will be on the website um, super easy to make even if you have to hand sew it, it's not a difficult build at all. It just, of course, takes more time. Um, but again, it's a, it's a very attractive little bag. Um, folks love them. Um, everyone, I'm, I, I don't really sell my leather work anymore, but I give a lot of it away. And um, I mean, everybody that's got one of these from me just really loves it. Um, customers that have come in the store have really liked them. Um, so yeah. I uh, hope you had fun building this bag, and until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and keep making it with makers. Have a good day.